Faith builds are one of the flashiest and most satisfying ways of beating Elden Ring. In this video, I'll show you one faith build, capable of using all of the best incantations in the game, at least one per boss. For each spell, I'll show you how and where to find it, and all of the talismans and buffs you need to get the best out of it. So make your character, choose the Prophet starting class, and grab a golden seed as the starting item. To get set up for this run, rather than showing you something that you've seen many times before, just follow the setup that I did a few months back for my Pyromancy build. This is a super strong starting setup for every faith build, and gives you all of these items right from the start. Unlike the last couple of ultimate builds, I only used one weapon for this so you can follow this guide from beginning to end on all platforms. Once you're done, the first thing to grab is the Howl of Shabriri from the tower in North Lyurnia. This is an alternative to Flame Grant Me Strength that gives you more damage in exchange for making you slightly more vulnerable to enemy attacks. After that, we're going to head to Northern Limgrave to summon Water Village to kill the Mariner there. then to the Death Touch Catacombs to kill the wounded Black Knife Assassin for another death route. Head to the Bestial Sanctum in Kaelid and speak to Malaketh for our first incantation, Bestial Sling. To buff this, go down into the High Road Cave to kill the Golem for the Blue Dancer Charm. Bestial Sling is a very cool spell. While its damage is nothing like Catch Flames in the early game, think of it as a slightly spammable short sword or dagger, and it starts to make a little bit more sense. On enemies with low posture, you'll even get some staggers too. And it seems that making two of these ultimate videos has now broken my brain, because at this point I jumped off the cliff to ditch my runes instinctively, but this is a follow along, so you can use them here. I'm going to go for an unusual second boss, so I can show you two things. First off, killing Radan as the first boss on any faith build really isn't that much of a problem, because of how broken Catch Flame is. I am going to show off Catch Flame a little later in the run too, just to show you how good it is even late game. It's always nice to kill Radan early, because you can duplicate his remembrance for some extra cash. But the second reason you might want to do this is Radan's armor is a consistent early method of boosting your poise. Poise is a mechanic that I almost always completely ignore in Souls games, as I just prefer playing with light armor and light load. But by equipping the trousers, gloves and chest piece, you get 51 poise which is the magic number for not being interrupted during incantation casts. If you want to play this way, you can spend your next few levels on endurance to get away from fat rolling. For me though, this is just here for decoration. Now we're going to head to the Cathedral of Dragon Communion, and outside to kill the unpronounceable dragon. Cast Pest Threads from Torrent, keeping as close as possible, but get straight out of there at the first sign of any rock. then back to the cathedral to buy a big rock breath. To get the best out of it, we're then going to head down into the stranded graveyard, 
and all the way to the Banished Knight to grab the Dragon Communion Seal. For our next spell, we're going to head to Weeping Peninsula, drop down the cliffs and kill the Scarab for Lightning Strike. To boost our lightning damage, we head to the Wind and Ruins in Altus and all the way through, through the Stone Sword Key Gate to grab the Lightning Scorpion Charm. Now back to the frenzied village outskirts, buff up on the cliffs, then jump down to melt the Erdtree Avatar for the Lightning Shrouding tier. Run down the stairs of Godric's Arena and cast Big Rock Breath on the last step. Two casts of Lightning during the transition and you're all set up for Phase 2. Lightning Strike is far from the best Lightning spell but it is very good for getting our next incantation safely. There's a scarab in the road north of the Rockview Balcony Grace that drops Whirl O' Flame. Whirl O' Flame is a pretty bad incantation. I'm showing it off on Red Wolf as you could kill him with a strong sneeze, but any other incantation in this guide would be far better. For Renala, we need to kill a Crucible Knight. Any Yamfa viewers will know what's coming here. So head into the Evergel in Limgrave with your Buckler and Catch Flame to get the Crucible Horn spell. You don't want to get hit here, but he goes down with Catch Flame quite quickly. And that was the wrong Crucible Knight. It's the one in Stormvale that drops the horn, not the Everjar one. The charged version of the Crucible Horn spell just yeets Renala clean into the air, so this really isn't a tricky one. Now we have our third talisman slot, head into the Lux Ruins in Altus for the Ritual Sword Talisman. Now back to Argyll Lake, as we need another Dragon Heart. Buff up at a distance, and then we want to ride in and get as close as possible. Fuck. Now, Draconic Tree Sentinels can be a little bit of a nightmare on incantation builds. And the spell that I'd written down for the Altus one was Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw is an immensely cool looking spell, but it does have quite a long recovery animation, leaving you locked in place after an attack. The obvious solution to this would be cheesing him with Poison Mist, but where's the fun in that? I think this will be okay because if I spam roll after casting, I think I'll be out of the animation quick enough.
For Godfrey, we're going to use O Flame. You can get the prayer book you need for this in the camp in southern Liania. Take this to the big dog in the Church of Vows to buy the spell. O Flame is just a big version of Catch Flame, so this should be perfect for Godfrey. But it turns out that the tracking on this spell is immensely shit. So make sure your character is pointing directly at him before you cast it. For Morgoth, first enter the fight, then quit out immediately. We're using one of our setup spells here for possibly the easiest fight on any faith run. Buff up outside, walk in, and just spam your big frenzied sniper rifle at Morgoth until he's dead. As you're heading through the Zamor ruins, snipe the scarab out of the tree for the somber seven, allowing us to level our seal to plus nine. For fire giant, we're gonna head into Ainsel River, all the way through the caves until you find the dragonkin soldier for frozen lightning spear. This spell is super powerful and it sends out a big AOE similar to Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. So it's amazing for the bigger bosses. Now for Farum. When you get to the Tempest facing Balcony Grace, double back and grab the Ancient Dragon Prayer Book from this room. And take it back to the pup for Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. And I don't think I need to say much about this spell. So when you're not yeeting them off cliffs with your big dragon hands, what's a sensible way of dealing with draconic tree sentinels on faith builds? If you want a scrap, I'd go for this approach, starting off with big rock breath, then into parries and catch flame. If you don't want to actually fight them and just want them to die, I'd go with dragon Maw.
Next up is Commander Nile, and to obliterate him, we're going to head into the castle on the White Ridge Road. Now to the giant hero's gravesite. Get jump scared by the hand that you still forget is there, then down into the dungeon. Follow this route to safely grab the giant seal. For the commander, we're using Giant's Flame Take Thee. And this is just a massacre with this spell. One shot each of the summons, then just keep your distance to lock him into this attack. Dodge the electric foot, two rolls back, then cast. Now we have access to the snowfield, so we can go and grab Unendurable Frenzy. Now the reason that I'm here is because I was originally planning to use this spell to one-shot Malaketh with. But the more I thought about it, the more I remembered how complicated and specific that Frenzy setup was. And to avoid adding 10 minutes of unnecessary setup onto this video for the sake of a 5 second fight, I decided against it. But you can watch my full guide on that if you want to try it. So for Beast, I used Flame Fall upon them. While it's at its best fighting mobs and very large enemies, it works fine for Beast. For Malaketh, I use the Crucible title. This definitely isn't the best choice for this fight because its damage isn't great and you can't get off the charge version safely. However, it is immensely satisfying to gradually bonk Malaketh to death with your big tail. For our next spell, down into the Shunning Grounds. When you make it to the second set of stairs, find the ledge with the string right next to it, then jump around this corner and hit an R2 on top of the lift to sneak yourself in. For Omen Moog, just use past threads with the blue dancer charm. You can stay at range for a longer but safer fight or stay close to get it over with as quickly as possible.
Now let me show you the two variations of this parkour skip. If you're just heading down to the three fingers or to deep root depths, hit this guy in the back to move him forward. Then again for the stagger. However, if you want to get the spell that we want, instead hit him in the direction of the pillar, moving him as close as you can to it. Being that little bit more to the right will land you on this ledge where you can jump over and grab inescapable frenzy. While it's not the perfect solution for our old friend, it is a damn satisfying one. Next up back to the artist shack in Leonia to kill the wandering knight nearby for the lightning prayer book, which allows us to get a souls classic. Lightning Spear is one of Elden Ring's workhorse spells. While not being anywhere near as flashy or destructive as Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike, it's a lot safer and it eats away at health bars of any size. The Ancient Dragon version of it is a far worse incantation but in certain circumstances, it has its uses. Now the health bars are as big as they can get, it's time to head back to Stormvale to show off another ridiculously good early incantation. Head into the Stonesword key room by the rats to grab the Godskin prayer book and the Godslayer's seal. And a final visit to the Cool Hound to buy Black Flame. Black Flame is one of the best spells in the game for its percentage based damage. You can use this spell to kill pretty much anything at pretty much any level. Combined with very quick casting, this spell just deletes health bars. And for a bit of fun here, wait until Plassey gets to low health. When he disappears to start the big fire attack, run to the nearest wall of the arena. Roll his dive and you'll end up behind him for the whole laser attack. From here you can use whatever spell you like for the rest of his health bar.
For Loretta on a faith build, I love using Big Rock Breath at the start. It does so much damage, so it's good even if you don't get a proc. I use the Stone of Garank for the rest of her health bar, but if you get a rock proc, she's pretty much already dead. Next up, head to the nearest and most convenient dragon for one more dragon heart. Dragonmore is absolutely ridiculous and can be used to beat every boss in the game very easily. With a hybrid Faith Arcane build with the Dragon Communion Seal and the Jellyfish Shield, this spell will kill Moog before Blood Boon Ritual every single time. With the right RNG and Hiver Armor, you can kill him before it on this setup. But even if you don't, it's still a trivial fight. Speaking of the jellyfish shield, head to the foot of the four belfries to grab it. This is one that I always struggle to fit into my faith builds because of my tendency to rush the earth tree seal from the start, and my love of the blue dancer charm, light rolling and parrying, but the 20% damage boost you get from it does make it a very worthy addition to any faith build with the stat requirements. To absolutely destroy a Radar beast. Run up to Radagon and cast five Catch Flames before jumping, then another two as soon as he lands. And for Elden Beast, the ultimate spell for this fight, Pest Threads. The closer you are when casting the spell, the more damage you will get. For Melania, I wanted to showcase one of the most powerful ways of using a faith build. And on this occasion, it's not even an incantation. Here is what using Flame of the Fell God and Blasphemous Blade together does to Melania on a pure faith build. But before you think that this is the ultimate way of fighting her, it undoubtedly is, when she doesn't hyper armor out of staggers and give you all of the worst attacks at the precise moment that you don't need them. Which is kind of what Melania does, that's, that's her thing. So for the ultimate bullying that's far more forgiving, you can add Burno Flame in there for the holy trinity of annihilating Melania. And that's it, how to make the ultimate faith build. If you've tried out these incantations and have a particular favourite, let me know what it is in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.